crap, I'm gonna have to pick all that up. What's up everybody? Graver here, and today, yes, we are gonna be taking a look at this, the Dart Zone Vulcanator. Uh, this has been on my want list for quite a while, um, pretty much ever since I kind of saw it. Uh, I happened to pick it up when Dart Zone had a sale at Target a couple weeks ago. It wasn't the great Tomcat sale, um, unfortunately I missed out on that. But I still picked this up, and even if it's not on sale, it's not a terribly expensive blaster. This normally retails for uh, 30 bucks US, so... And it's a fully automatic clip-fed magazine, clip -zine, whatever the hell you want to call it. I'm going to be using all the terms. Uh, fed blaster. And as with any of my reviews, we will be going over the aesthetics of this blaster, what it comes with, how it works, take it over to the workbench, see what makes this thing tick, and then I'm going to give you my final thoughts on it. Uh, so, right off the bat, this is just about everything that you do get with it. Uh, you do get two 12-round dart zone clips that will just slide into these little magazine wells. And this is the profile of the blaster when it is loaded with what it comes with. It does also come with a stock. Uh, this is a non-collapsible non stock. Uh, so it's this is the length, whether you like it or not. However, because Dart Zone is doing this, this is an end strike compatible uh, stock attachment point. So if you wanted to use something like the Raider stock or a Worker or Super Soaker Lightning stock, you can with this. So that's actually really neat. Uh, you have your Dart Zone faux Picatinny up here. It does come with a faux scope. Uh, there is no plastic in the scope itself, or sorry, no plastic lenses in the scope. You do have a very nice, honestly, crosshair down here. Um, I don't know how well it's going to show up, but honestly, I really like the crosshair on the scope, but I mean, it's not really doing anything. It's just literally the crosshair as opposed to iron sights. Uh, you do get the two clips from here. You also get the magazine wells attached separately. So when the blaster comes, it does actually show up flat like this, and then you have to attach these on. There's only one way to attach them on. And you can see here, because you can see how it lines up because it has the pieces that basically line up with the well itself. Um, one thing I want to point out, though, uh, while these do snap into place, and it seems like they hold very well, they're not too well structured for weight. Um, on the plus side, since you already have the compatible end strike uh, stock attachment point, these magazines are also cross-compatible with Nerf Elite uh, magazines. So where you can load the dart zone into one, if you happen to have a Nerf magazine, you can put it into the other side. I happen to have my 35 round Raider drum here, and as you can see, it fits in properly, which is great because that means uh, you can potentially load this thing up with 100 darts if you happen to have the uh, Titan uh, super drum, or if you happen to have the Raider drum, you'll at least get 90 rounds out of it, because if you have one in one side and one in the other, there you go. Uh, but now, as I was saying, with in regards to the weight, yeah, these are nice and light. This is kind of weighty, so unfortunately, this will happen quite often. Um... I wouldn't say, actually no, I will say, that is an inherent flaw with the blaster itself. Um, it does make for a nice way of being able to break this down so it's, it lays flat for transport. However, because those clips pop 
up so easily with additional weight. Um, unfortunately, it does make running larger mags a bit of a hassle. Um, well, all right, so now we're going to go over to how this thing functions. You take your clips, magazines, whatever you want to call them. You load them up into each side. Now, this doesn't fire both at once. This fires one side or one clip and then the other clip. Uh, the closest thing that's actually ever been manufactured to this uh, would be the Nerf Double Dealer, which was a Springer. Um, I did have one and I did review one, and I'll throw it up here if you're actually interested in going to check that out. Uh, but that actually fired both darts at the same time, loading uh, each loading one from each clip and honestly I did like that thing it reminded me uh, for it reminded me a lot of the shotgun from uh the Keanu Reeves Constantine movie uh I mean I know it's not an exact one-to-one -one, but it seemed like something that would work like that uh there were a lot of flaws with that thing but overall the aesthetics and the concept I did still like from it uh this actually fires out of the right side first and then the left side uh, it will work on a sort of kind of smart AR system where if this is empty, it will just shift right over to your other side. Or if you just happen to load up one side, it will fire out of that particular side itself. Uh, like all flywheel blasters, um, it does have a rev trigger. So you hold this down. You turn it into a chainsaw, and then you're able to pull the trigger. It does have a trigger lock, so I cannot pull it if I'm not revving. However, if I am revving, I can then pull the trigger no problem. Um, you have a small uh, foregrip or front grip up here. Uh, not a nothing beefy or anything like that. It's actually very sleek to the blaster itself, and it just gives a nice little place to put your hands rather than just like trying to wrap it around the front end of it so you've got a nice little like actual grip and with this stock as long as it is it's actually not very uncomfortable um for my size this is actually very well sized uh if i happen to take off the stock you know i can still somewhat be able to be fine with it or without the stock it will be it's a little easier to hip fire it um especially since you're just firing off 24 shots so there's that uh you get the standard dart zone blue and gray uh combination with it it also does say the powered by ptdz which is playtime toys uh dart zone i think it's playtime toys i'm not sure but it's whatever the parent company for dart zone is and then dart zone uh, they actually put these a lot on their um, their rival brand. I the name escapes me. I'll just throw it here. But yeah, their rival brand basically had that all over it. Uh, so I guess they're kind of putting it on the blasters themselves now, just to keep branding all cohesive. Which honestly, I'm fine with. That's actually really nice. Uh, you also do have a Dart Zone badge on each side along with um, a little badge that says VMAG. Now, I'm 99% positive that if you decided to open this up, strip it down, and decided to throw a paint job on it, you can actually pop those out because I have already added a thumb screw to this because it actually took me a little bit to figure out where the darts go because, honestly, this dart door blended in so well like i really had no idea exactly where it was but it also takes six uh double a batteries and as i was saying before about the badges coming off you can see on the back there it just you can pop that off right there but yeah the battery door if you don't have a thumb screw like i do it just blends into the blaster which actually makes it really nice i honestly like that part of it um but yeah that's really all i can say about this thing um 
I'm going to take this to the workbench. We're going to open it up and actually see what the insides look and see basically, I guess, how much more different from every other flywheel blaster this actually is. So let's go and take a look at it. Okay, so before I actually open this whole thing up, I wanted to point something out that I thought was kind of neat. Um, one, this is clipped onto the front. It's actually not terrible to come off, or at least mine was not. Uh, it's not glued or anything. It's literally held on with those two little tabs. But once you take off the uh, bottom grip or the front grip, uh, you can actually angle this off pretty well because it's part of what holds it on. And just flathead screwdriver pops that off right easily. But what I found interesting was, is this. The, I guess, barrel just comes right out. It slides in and out. It's, I don't know why. I just find that kind of interesting that, you know, it's, it's that, um, Okay, so yeah, I'll be back in a second after I finish taking out all the other screws. <laughs> okay, so we have, I've taken all the screws out uh, of the blaster, so, you know, make things a little easier, and I've checked that already is opening up. The barrel came off, you gotta take the front, you have to take this front piece off in order to open it. Um, once you take off the battery door, you will note that there are three screw ports in the battery tray itself. And those are the only real hidden screws that are in this thing. So I'll take that off and this off. And the grip, like, honestly, a bunch of the, ri the, the rival-like blasters uh, does come off very easily. And you have... It's separated, so if you don't want to paint the grip and you just want to paint the body, it makes it very easy. And, as I had mentioned earlier, yes, you're able to just pop off the little badge. So, here we have the inside of the Vulcanator, and, I mean, I'm not surprised that, obviously, it has a, um, a motor-driven... Uh, Hmm. Oh, I did not. Okay, stupid me. So, I tend, this tends to happen whenever I do any kind of review where I always forget to unscrew something. So, you can actually open this up without removing the screws in the battery tray. But if you do, the battery tray kind of stays over the pusher motor. So, with that removed... Uh, this is your pusher motor, uh, which is completely encased in plastic, which, all right, that's fine. And, aha, so I see how this thing works now. So, I mean, you have your basic flywheeler setup. You have your cage here, uh, which actually has four flywheels, uh, two stacked on top of them, on, stop, on top of each other, I should say. Uh, you have your pusher motor, you have your switches and all that good stuff. And surprisingly enough, and honestly, I'm not surprised, and it actually does work out very easily for this. And that is that the way it flips back and forth between the magazines is just a little mechanical switch. So I'll try and lift this up. Uh, give me one sec. So, you can see here, there's this little thing right here. And that's basically how it works. So, when this magazine comes in, it will push, as long as it has a dart, it pushes the mo. it actually pushes this little piece over to block that particular pusher. So that this is the pusher that works. And let me just, yeah. So there are two pushers there. And all this is doing is basically just blocking the pusher. And that's it. So when this dart is, when this side is empty, it just goes and then it starts feeding out of that side. I mean, it's 
so simplistic it's like i'm su not surprised at it but that's just really neat my only thought is and let's, i and i apologize if this is kind of off camera but i'm like looking i don't all this is is just literally a piece of, piece of plastic with um with a spring on it i don't see any switch that would indicate you know it's over one i literally think all it does is just it stops the pusher from pushing which kind of begs the question of wouldn't over time it kind of like strip the gear or whatever but you know what now this has got me curious give me a minute okay so i am going to do something that i hope to god does not wreck anything but just to see how if there is some kind of a mechanical switch so a couple screws are loose I'll just throw them in the bin oh and i did not mention it but yes all screws are the same size always great job on that dart zone so okay so sorry i'm trying to figure this out i'm for viewers normal viewers of the channel you know the electronics are not my strongest forte so Oh my God. Yeah. So both, and I apologize for the, the revving and all that stuff, but yeah, that, that's interesting. The, yeah, this little piece of plastic is the only thing that, and both pushers go at the same time as you're revving. So if you actually wanted to just make this thing a shotgun, you could technically take this piece out and just have it firing two shots at the same time um yeah because i noticed as i had this little piece up keeping clear of that pusher this pusher the up the left side one is actually going it's just not moving anywhere because this is blocking it that's actually fascinating Huh. Yeah, this, th th this is now just for me. So yeah, that that's something. That's actually kind of neat. And also looking at everything, um, obviously the flywheel cage is uh screwed in your pusher motor and pusher mechanism is screwed in your battery tray is obviously screwed in uh you have a couple of things screwed in here so uh and you also do have a trigger um you do have a trigger lock right here so that if this is not up or if you're not revving uh, this is engaged, which actually prevents you from push from pulling the trigger. And truth be told, I mean, it really doesn't kind of matter because if you're not pulling the trigger, like I, I'm not doing it, but I'm pushing the, the red, the, the trigger switch and nothing's happening. So the lock is kind of redundant. Um, I'm knowing me, I'll probably take it out off camera, but if you want to keep it in to keep yourself from jamming this thing up, that's fine. Um, if you want to take it out, it's very simple. It's just this screw here and that screw there holding the spring. You take those out and you're actually fine. Um, the only thing is though, this does also act as a 
return spring for your rev trigger. So you may actually want to keep that in. Um, if anything, just for that alone. So, yeah, you may, I, I'm probably going to wind up keeping that in just because it does act as a return spring for that. Um, so, yeah. But, yeah, that is the internals of the Villainator. So, I'm going to button this guy back up and I'm going to give you my final thoughts. So, my final thoughts on the Vulcanator. Um, honestly, I like this thing. I am not a flywheel person. Like, that is basically my only one that I'm willing to run. But something like this, I wouldn't mind actually running. Um, the thing sounds like a chainsaw, like every other flywheel blaster does. But it's it's nice. It's compact. compact. It's full auto. And it has two magazines that will feed it not to mention the magazines do not interrupt your sight profile so you can aim down sights with whatever the hell you want here um okay so one one maybe small caveat is if you happen to have the raider drum actually no even with the raider drum here because the other one would go down this way you're still not blocked on a sight profile so that's actually really, really nice. Um, also, the fact that the insides of this, where I thought would be kind of like convoluted and all chipped out and stuff, were honestly stupid simple. It's got one motor that runs your pusher, uh, pusher system, and all that does is basically just move your the things back and forth, and that's it. Um, the fire selector is just a spring-loaded uh, switch which easy enough um, and you've got a double flywheel cage so each side feeds into its own flywheel it's not like trying to smush it into one or just one giant one uh, so that's actually pretty nice uh, so I mean obviously this thing can probably take a couple of good upgrades especially if you rework all of the uh, wiring you have something that has uh, stock attachment points that one it comes with a fairly decent stock to begin with but is now compatible with every single one of your end strike stocks um, you have a magazine a double magazine fed flywheel blaster that is not only compatible with dart zone mags but also all of your nerf mags and drums and and it's cheap. It's only 30 bucks. It's cheaper than a Rapid Strike, for crying out loud. Um, yeah, this is honestly a really, really nice blaster. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't address the elephant in the room, which is the side plates just being able to pop off with a lot or very little weight and a bit of a jiggle. Um, thankfully, our community being what it is has solve that very quickly um there are 3d printed parts and i know there's a bunch on there probably on thingiverse or whatever but uh for the hell of it i am throwing this uh shot in here along with a link in uh down below to an etsy page that actually sells these things pre-built uh pre-printed for 20 bucks so i mean it's not terrible especially for you know something decently sized print but you wouldn't be able to keep your scope in this position it would either have to be back or really forward because the print as you can see in the picture that i'm putting up here slides on your rails to basically just lock these into place um it may look a little chunky but honestly it kind of need that in order to you know make sure it doesn't break or snap with what it's got to hold on to so if you don't mind running light magazines like just the 12 rounders then this thing is perfect right out of the box if you want to run this as a heavy weapon uh and really like load it down with darts i would definitely recommend getting that uh 3d printed piece or finding out thing of person printing it yourself but yeah that's all I can say about the Vulcanator. Uh, it's cheap, it's good, and it does what it does very well. So, 
that's going to be it for this video. So, as always, if you enjoy the content we put here on the channel, please throw us a like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the Vulcanator. And have you used it or, you know, your thoughts on it. I love reading all those comments. And, ooh, don't forget to click that little bell icon. Otherwise, you may not know when me and Arlene are doing our silliness here on the channel. And don't forget, we still have a P.O. box, so... It's down in the description if you want to send us snail mail or something. Uh, I enjoy reading letters. But, uh, yeah. So, again, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Later.